Welcome to a new video lecture. Today we will discuss a problem related with the inference line diagram. In this question, how to analyze a beam when UDL and then point is load acting over it. So let us go to the question. So simply supported beam with a total span length is 14 meters given and a different point load like 40 kilo newton, then 60 kilo newton and 80 kilo newton is also given. And a UDL with the magnitude 10 kN per meter is given. So we have to find out the shear force at the point C. We have to find out the shear force at the point C and also bending moment at the point C. Okay. Then how to analyze using the influence line diagram? We will discuss now. When let us consider when a unit load is acting over this beam, how the influence line diagram will come? That we can we already drawn those diagrams in the previous lectures. That is, if a U point load is traveling from this point A to this point B, how the diagram will come in this shape. Okay. So the magnitude that is negative shear force at the point C will be Z by L and positive or maximum positive shear force value will be L minus Z by L. That's the value. That means is the value represented here? This is the is the distance. Okay, and the remaining distance will be L minus is that. So we can note on that is that value here. The total span length will be four meters. So we can write is that four by forty. Total span length is forty. And here the remaining distance will be that means L minus is that will be ten. And we can write out ten by forty. So we have to very easily we can write down the shear force at each point. This load is acting at the point D and we can write down that this value is going to be what is this is the distance here up to this point A to D distance what is the distance A D distance will be 2 meters 2 by 14 is here okay then coming to this E then F and G how the distance is going to vary here you have to write down how it is going to be 8 by 14 here you have to check what is the distance going to be here. That is E to B. E to B means 2 plus 2 plus 4 that is 8. So 8 by 40. And at the point F, what is the remaining distance here? Remaining distance means F to B will be 2 plus 4 that is 6. 6 by 40. Then what is between here the point is G and what is going to be? the GB, what is the distance GB that is 4 by 40. So, so in this way we will put, put the magnitude over each point. So now we will move on to how to find out the shear force at the C. So if you are to find out, you have to analyze each point. Okay. So in this case, in the, at the point D, at the point D, the magnitude is negative. And if you cut down this value, it will be going to be 1 by 7. So it is written as minus 1 by 7 multiplied by 40. 40 is the magnitude acting at the point D. This minus 1 by 7 means it is the magnitude of 1 unit load. But we have to multiply this 40 kN along this magnitude, this 1 minus 1 by 7. Then we have to find out the area under this portion. Okay, that means this where the UDL is acting, we have to find out the area. So it is in the shape of a trapezium and trapezium formula is if this is the distance A plus B, then half, half into A plus B multiplied by, let us assume this distance BH. So this is the equation for calculating the area of a trapezium. So we can write down as minus 1 by 2 means the negative magnitude. So 1 by 2 multiplied by this values are 1 by 7 plus this 4 by 14 you can cut down as 2 by 7 1 by 7 plus 2 by 7 then multiplied by 2 2 means this distance between CD then the magnitude of this UDL you can multiply after that you have to multiply the area under this curve that means CE so the area will be again a trapezium so half multiplied by this value is going to be cut down as 5 by 7 and here it is going to be 4 by 7. So 5 by 7 plus 4 by 7 multiplied by the distance between CE that is 2 meters into 10. 
Okay, the magnitude of UDI. Then you have to add the next you have to coming to this point F yes, where the 60 kilonewton is acting. What is the value of F? It will, is going to be 6 by 14. That you can cut down as 3 by 7. So 60 multiplied by 3 by 7. And finally, last point is G. Here it is 80 kilonewton is acting. So the value here is you can cut down as 2 by 7. And finally, you get 80 multiplied by 2 by 7. And if you add up all these values, you finally get 51.43 kilonewton. So this is the magnitude of shear force at the sea. Okay, I hope it is clear. Then coming to the bending moment. How to analyze the bending moment? You have to analyze by using the unit load how the diagram will vary. And the maximum hope value is going to be Z multiplied by L minus Z by L. This is the maximum value when a point load is at or unit load travels from this portion A to B. Okay. Then our intention is to find out the bending moment at the point C. So the let us assume this ordinate distance B, let us Y1 and the, the maximum value is Y3 and corresponding at the point F, E is Y2 and F is Y3 and G is Y4. And we can find out the value of YC as is that means this distance is going to be 4 and the remaining distance is going to be 10. So 4 multiplied by 10 by 14 that gives finally you get 20 by 7. Then we have to use the similar triangle properties. So first case you will try, take this small triangle that means this is the first triangle and we have to compare with the, this triangle. Okay. So if you take the distance as y1 similar triangle property y1 by this distance that is 2 meter y1 by ad equal yc by ac that is 4 meter. Okay. Once again, I will repeat, you have to consider the similar triangle property. In this case, this ordinate distance is y1 and uh, this span distance is area 2 meter and you have to equate with this to yc by ac that is 4 meter and you finally get the value of substitute this yc value and finally get y1 as 10 by 7. Similarly, you have to follow in each triangle. So next you will consider this bigger triangle yc and this eb and here you have to compare with this, this small triangle and you will finally get y2 by 8 8 means this much a distance it is going to be 8 that means eb eb is going to be 8 and yc by 10 10 will be this span distance that is bc so finally you get y2 value of 16 by 7 and then next you have to take the y3 value this small triangle again we have to compare with this bigger triangle. Y3 by the remaining distance, that is, this much distance is going to be 6. And y, Y3 you will get 12 by 7. Y4, similarly you will get the distance between GB is 4 meter given in the question. YC is 10. YC by 10. And finally, you get Y4 value is 8 by 7. Then you have to substitute the values at each point. First, you, you have to take the point D. How the value? The value at the D that is y1 is given as 10 by 7. You can directly multiply with the magnitude. The point load magnitude is 40. So you can directly multiply with this 40. Then you have to take the area that is for this shaded area you have to take since there is the UD is acting here. So y1 plus yc y1 value is 10 by 7 and yc value is 20 by 7 by 2 that is half the area multiplied by the span distance that is 2 then multiplied by the UDL magnitude okay you have to consider this UDL magnitude very important then you have to take the area under this curve since there is also UDL portion is acting so half multiplied by YC value is 20 by 7 plus uh, this Y2 value is given as 60 by 7 so 20 by 7 plus 60 by 7 then the span distance that is 2 meter multiplied by the magnitude of UDL. After that you have to come to this point here. F. The Y3 value is 12 by 7 multiplied by the magnitude given as 60. Then the magnitude at Y4 is 8 by 7 multiplied by the magnitude at G that is 80. And finally you will get 345 by 345.71 kilonewton meter will be the bending moment value. Okay. 
So this is the procedure for finding out the shear force and the bending moment when different loads are acting over the wheel. So with this we will wind up today's section. Thank you all.